event called Poet Laureate Presents. My name is Mervyn Morris. The series of readings have taken place all over the country um, since I've been made Poet Laureate. We've been to Portland, Kingston and St. Andrew, Manchester, St. James, St. Mary, Westmoreland and Hanover, St. Anne, and now, at last, St. Elizabeth. Um, I want to say thanks to the National Library who have the duty of managing the Poet Laureate project, and to thank in particular their marketing officer, public relations person, um, Mr. Stefan Morris. Now this evening, we're going to have three readers. Um, first will be Yashika Graham, and she'll be followed by Richard Dingo Dingwell, and finally Mbala. And I'll introduce each one just before they read. Okay, is that level okay? All right. Yashika Graham won a gold medal for poetry in the 2016 JCDC competition, Creative Writing Competition. She has read for audiences in Jamaica, the United States, the United Kingdom, Venezuela, and Panama. Her poems have been accepted by magazines in Panama and the Caribbean including the Caribbean writer and Susumba's book bag. She is working on her first collection, and last year she released a short film presenting the title poem of that collection. The title poem is Directions from the Border. Yashika is an executive member of the Poetry Society and has hosted its monthly poetry fellowships. Please welcome Yashika Graham. Greetings, everybody. Thank you. So, most things begin this way, where I come from, with tea. So, I'll begin this way. Tea. You take the fever grass as compliment, as a healing hemisphere to span the heart. Come home, let the fickle bindings unwrap their quivering from your bones. Make tea, make peace, make heaven from the light laughter of wind and kiss tomorrow anew. You will find that with each binding, grass on grass, as you wind a tie around the making of heat that you have found yourself wrapped in a daylight dreamland but that it is high night the heart begging you calling in a quiver to drum up heart ease make tea this is prescription Imagine I'm an old woman living in the bush somewhere. This is coming from her. The good doctor recommends doses of feeling for this shutdown condition. Something for bruise and battering, seven days a week for heart healing. Says you will do well with the ounce of bitters. Three green elements that bind wood and vine. Something to flush all held feeling rebirth a spirit healing. Come again, come down from Tributil. Keep this in your pocket. Leave leaf of life under your tongue for sanctity. And all else is within heart memory. And we were just um, skylarking um, on a swing and a hammock and everything like that and it it's reminded me of this this poem like swing song was just a very it was so interesting growing up and you know that was 
was one of the, the, the joys of growing up swinging. So this is swing song. When the spinning, the wild, wild wheeling stops or slows, slow or slow, the closed eye no recognize. So the spirit in its dark twirling still is hoisted up, up through tree limbs. You may tell them if you can catch them. So my grandfather is a farmer. Most of my family are farmers. And my mother told me something once about, you know, just he's leaning on his tools and writers will feel this way about your pen or your paper, you know. We gather things, I guess, as humans that are special to us. So, Master Richard would have rather lean out in fork than in my shape. How the shape of handle and familiar turns could change in one use. A fork of one can hold and not shift its shape, bent in its ways till it breaks. But a machete is personal, and they come to know the farmer like friend, like kin, know which bush to devour, sight up sacred pumpkin vines to sidestep, and walk tenderly through the pathways of seedlings. Whenever you go to market, there's always people who are, uh, I suppose, guiding you or giving you advice about how to, how to prepare particular things. And you hear a lot of interesting conversations there. Um, and once my, my younger sister and I went to market and we heard two women arguing. One was accusing the other of being an obia woman. And um, it was a woman I always bought from. But I, this came from me. Obe woman in Bendong market. Tell the God truth. You believed when she told you the yam would float and the spoon stick immovable. Is she planted? She knows this coarse rent a temperament composed beneath its dirt bark. And you know better, but you buy, like she knew you would. Her voice a trail de la lingua, clasps fortifications about your neck in a bend-down ceremony of how to set the pace for Sunday rising, to solve the gogo for ease of living. She tells you how this will end, that you will cook the yam, drink the soup to barrier a body against hard life and return again next week. Take a black number for your change. You choose, refusing her eye for fear she might pull you guilty into other failing fruit. Okay, uh, so Derek Walcott has a poem, or a series of poems, um, in which he petitions what sounds like a formal level. Um, the, the series is called A Simple Flame, and this poem begins with a quote from it. He names the, the former lover as Anna. The quote reads, There have been other silences, none as deep. There has since been possession, none as sure. A haunting. If, like Anna, I should wake to a you reaching, who searched with the indefinite mappings of memory, who sat in some city square under some glass of sky, milking recall. If we should meet again, the decades parceled on the folds and folds of letters never mailed, me, like my mother, harvesting love for its words. If we should meet, drinking soberings of talk and laughter, taking each sun sighting as concord to a day much like this, but bereft of the sinking songs of absence. Tell me you have been waiting, that like me, the years have strung my scent each hour onto your windowsill, that you still kept everything, 
and remember the extraction tactics of the subtle smile. Tell me you have returned. Having burnt the world and its wilds, know now that you are all, that every feeling is folded, fragment on fragment, on the skin you have always possessed. So growing up, I, I don't know the origin, origin of this, but there's this awareness um, that horseshoe round up it. Is that a common thing? Everybody? So on many of the doors on the house, there's a horseshoe. It's front door on the kitchen. There's a... Ah, uh, okay, yes. So it's a... You have to jump on the Oh, you see that upper door? It's normally this way. Okay. Facing down. Okay, so that affects the power of it? If you put it around, you can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, so this is horseshoe. <laughs> On your door is warning that people shift when you leave. They put your possessions away and up where you can't reach, retake family pictures, change sheets. They turn the beds and remember you with dread. Today I put up is a dry coconut and ripe banana together. And I taste my granny yard. Taste food I can't recall. Taste this rhythm of being young and full of ramping. And I wonder where the years have gone. Wandered out of the city, into the board house in the bush, and re-entered me at eight. And to think how I long to be big and tall and out of parental ordering, longed not to be deemed fresh and feisty by misunderstanding. And how now, close to 30, with new eyes petitioning my knees, I long for that place, shifting through time. this final one for my mother. My mother saves pure seeds to catch the breed. The inside of deep sunset pumpkin to fill the yard with secrets of its vines. My mother is a bush woman. Sings river valleys to mountain tops. Springs light from pitch blank into high sailing hallelujahs. My mother is a bushwoman, grazing green thumb in earth revival, springing life from concrete. This woman, raised on yellow heart, breadfruit, and bush tea, made tomato and cucumber shake with a salt and pepper resolve. So I fell in love with taste. This woman, heavy handed, good timing connoisseur of the belly foot, with kindred gift of great river balance seldom fails to love, to love, even with a tribe of wild pygmy. My mother is a green woman, bred of the bush. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yoshika. Another round of applause. Richard Dingo Dingo joined the Poetry Society in 1995. He has performed in Barbados and the United Kingdom at the World Alive Life Literary Festival in St. Lucia and in Jamaica at Reggae Songfest and the Calabash International Literary Festival. His CD, Ransom, is a blend of music and poetry. And the video of Earth Speaks, which is from the album, was voted Video of the Year by the Caribbean Broadcasting Union. Poems by Dingo have been included in anthologies such as Jubilation and So Much Things to Say. Please welcome 
Dingo. Sponging precious pigment to fashion new camouflage, no shades of ourselves. Rootless, indigenous to the day. The meek, sold on scriptures of joy and lay away, blindly await their inheritance, but sequels are usually contrived. The jaded, unceremoniously peel and dash with a bump, yet to receive word of their own passing. The tongues and the fight swaddled in the pining silence of the Yabeng. And lost in this desecration of visceral treatises you might be. Your mountains not famous but for the brew. Yet your children sleep, content to fail history. Strings weakened like untuned jimbe. Fireless like your mythical cauldrons, unable to conceive you. But hang on, the queen, the magic's still strong. And you still up on 500 strong. When black heroes these days slowly turning into small change. <laughs> If I have learned one thing from the E True Hollywood stories, it's that we should seriously be concerned when everything is going right. 3 a.m. I'm lying awake with her head on my chest and I'm thinking, if nothing good comes without sacrifice, then what do I owe for having her here? Well, how did I get here? She was the one trying to get my love and her love to coincide. I was just trying to go inside, except women always seem to have a timetable. And all this waiting got me hot and thirsty. Water, poisoned water, now I'm breaking out into these nasty little things called feelings. Fast forward four weeks, two hearts become one, two homes become one, one a.m. I'm lying awake and I'm thinking, Sudanese flora will testify that come too quickly, come too intense, and subsequent to periods of drought. It can be a dubious blessing, and still, fools thinking water is everywhere, bathed liberally, drained effortlessly, and backs remain hard to reach places. Skip to six months, love slightly loses its anchoring truth, recalls its obligation, and words, words suddenly confounded by these conditions of zero gravity become wayward yet heat-seeking. So now, no semi-rational discussion on globalization or the socio-economic impact of absentee fathers on inner city communities is exempt from her interjection that three days prior, I failed to recognize 
that a toilet seat has a horizontal position. <laughs> and that's what you can't live with them. You can't live with them. <laughs> and that's love as contagious yet as fleeting as beyond this water, this my amniotic savior now threatening my lungs. 11 p.m. after a late night fight, I'm staring at a chipped out piece of paint on my bedroom wall that bears a striking resemblance to the shape of Africa and I'm thinking, this chick got to go back home. It's no water, a mirage, an idiosyncratic stupor, a flaw in human design. I fall asleep. And who am I a simple man to tackle that which hath eluded the most? erudite of scholars, that equal yet opposite reaction, that salmon-like yet seemingly socialized third strand forcibly woven into the helical braid, that beautiful beast that is makeup sex. I am no Sun Tzu, indeed less interest in the art of war than in the science of reconciliation, but my love is like water, with a resolve to seek its own path yet the patience to take the shape of that which seeks to contain it. My love is like water. We fold into one as we learn how to drink. Her mother taught the perils of looking back. 
The first time she came in, we talked and kissed, and it rained till my yard was flooded, knee height. Not unusual, but she had learned guilt, said it was a sign and never come back for two months. Now she forward. In the distance, a neighbor spinning Bob will be together with a roof right over our heads and share the shell toward my single bed. To mention a roof, but to have bed represent shelter is either compelling poetry or weed or bow, as me and she find meaning in this bed. In the dark room, the diamond flat, uncertain, a world before maps, she lies next to me in a bimetallic familiarity, touchable yet ethereal, the way we link memory to the tip of the tongue. Between trembling hands and the rising thoughts of swallows, everything slows. Disenchanted clocks now measuring the distance between mine and ours till her body speaks, then we speak in this rhythmic convention of skin. Anchored only by fistful of curtains, silence but for the speaking in tongue. Silence rented only by cognizant breathing and the murmur of vowels. A silence once reserved for intrusive angels now whispering to the blushing darkness. Her everything turns. Her father somewhere restlessly stirring while we hear stirring in rhythm, in sign, in the distance now, the spirit of line. Her forewarned and untold reconciled. Then rain start father. I kiss her when she tries to speak. Words have a way of hardening when exposed to air. Unsure how to hold the crumbling thrill of broken things or what we lose in the sharp corners of promises. We rest against the insides of the moment, grateful that fate still speculates, that God is not religious, that there is no uniform for joy. Our respective truths chorus from the modesty of this one room bed, her shelter, sanctuary with no judgments, a roof, but without a ceiling. All right, last piece, real quick. Um, and yes, I don't want to write a sense of mine. Them say God make man from land. Man come see land, claim land, fight man over land, get killed just to get buried in a land. Wake up. Recycle. <laughs> now sometimes when one man do a thing is different from when holy people do a thing. For example, holy people come see land, claim land, draw land, pan land, call it boundary, call land country, kill holy people over time fighting over land. Wake up. Civilization. Now one man comes sell and claim land, draw land, pan land, call it fence, call land, yard, put up residence. Wake up. Squatting. <laughs> so man I capture land, man I buy land, man I get land in a wheel. I don't like who sell the first piece of land. That brother is skill. So to North America came the European, discover the red man, discover him land, put him on a reservation, start up civilization. Devise a new plan, the space program, one small step to man. God help the Martian when them a man come for them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dingo. Another round of applause for Dingo. Mbala is a musician, a mask maker, and a poet who was presented in the Caribbean, Canada, the United States, Central America, Germany, and the United Kingdom. His poems have appeared in journals such as The Caribbean Writer, Sargasso, and Poetry Waves, and in various anthologies, including the Oxford Book of Caribbean Verse. A selection of his poems, Light in a Book of Stone, was published by the Calabash International Literary Festival in 2005. A regular participant in the JCDC Creative Writing Competition, 
Mbala received the Best Writer Award in 2007 and 2012. He's a Vice President of the Poetry Society. Please welcome Mbala. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Some of those slack make noise, so. <laughs> Is this part of the poetry? Huh? against flesh, always feeling the safe press of her hairdresser hands. I must tell you that, um, what is the oral equivalent of blinking your eyes? Oh, you can't blink your ears? Can you blink your ears? No. Don't blink your ears, I'm putting them shot. <laughs> This one is called Steam. That she got to put it on. In the kitchen, in the hills, the man strains the pasta. The cloud of steam shrinks him. Back to child, back to the kitchen on the flats, to mama pouring the long, long line of steaming chocolate from cup to cup, to cool in the early school day morning. Um, I'm not a piece from them times. Um, I was a little kid who, I was one of very introverted, bookish kind of people, you know? 
So we don't spend the time about the library and I had a passion for comic books. And um, every week we look forward to the new comic day. And they just kind of just carry me somewhere else. So this is uh, From Spain to Space. Some can work. I'll try to learn some more, but. From Spain, a Spain town, not Spain, right? You all know that. From Spain to space. Clad in khaki and hush puppy shoes. Young boy with old man walk. I hunt the Wednesday new comics. From the magazine racks in Victory Drug Store on Cumberland Avenue to that dark shop and Adelaide where comics hang like clothes on a line. And I trod these narrow spin down streets. My wide open head, my wide open head smeared across galaxies. At night time in the churchyard, Ben just steps away from the clap on congregation, tambourines and tongues of fire as lullabies, my closing eyes open doors to multiverse, myth, interstellar void. This is about uh, an illness which affects a lot of people. The symptoms are if you look in the mirror in the morning and you get your eyes kind of squarish. You know, you're getting TVI. <laughs> <laughs> and in these times, that also means yes. iPhone eyes. <laughs> I know it's going to take, right? <laughs> It's not called TVI. Well, it is, but it's also called Cool. 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 Cool you. The youth that TVI. Cool you. Brain damaged by murder, rape, robbery. Every night at 8:30, the soap operas are dirty, and this is not. Situation for comedy. It's 
called autobiography. I'm still writing it. <laughs> I'm writing the story of my life. I must be honest and advise you, skip pages 19, 28, and 137. And when you come to all those blank pages, your imagination will be much more exciting. I'm writing the story of my life. Read at the risk of erasing your illusions, of encountering quiet, quite boring desperation. And if you're older or more prudish than me, don't read page 23. <laughs> writing, the inspiration behind writing poems. And I've heard people say that, you know, poetry is something that you don't write yourself, you channel it from some higher plane, you know, that kind of stuff, and it's like it comes as an inspiration and it just, it just kind of just flows into your... <laughs> like, um, divine, like, like, piss. <laughs> There's a, there's a cloud of mosquito words from my head. Some of them stink like swamp. Damn things get up my nose and I have no choice but to blow them on paper. Here, have a poem. <laughs> Up into the sky, 
voice of a bird and toe dig deep in a dirt I grow like tree can't separate me from ground and air on the farthest sea the deepest sea the widest sea can't separate can't separate you from me. This I mean, all this I mean, this I mean, all this I mean. Every leaf is my finger, and light years away, we eye them, star of the night. The skin of moonlight, grass and rock and sand. Every crate upon the moon, every ring round Saturn. And the breeze, and the peony wadi. And you, splashing in the river. This I mean. Oh, this I mean. This I mean. Oh, this I mean, and the widest sea can't separate you from me. You know, um, we are, um, there's, a, there's a word we use a lot. Forty-third word, love. And we um, we dedicate lots of we, we do movies about love, we write poems, we write stories. Uh, so this is uh, love story number eight. I mean number eight. <laughs>
secret chambers. And long after they're dead, we feel them at the edges of our vision. Silent stepping, slipping around corners on busy streets, on the faces of strangers. And scratching, scratching, always scratching at our sleep with their phantom fingers. So um, this is the origin of some churches, all right? Called church. <laughs> we can't get no walk. I'm gonna bust my shot. You know what? I'm gonna start that shot. Basically, it's 
some oh here we go. So it goes like this. Anything, anything I 
play, you play, right? Alright? Sell books and we're gonna figure we should get a seat on the bus from Spanish on some read 
And when you read so much and the words them build up in your you just know, spill up. Oh, we don't know, we always used to make noise and we saw so draw and stuff and everything kind of seems to go together. I kind of, I'm kind of one of the people who believe that there shouldn't be two strict distinctions between the different art forms. Okay. So I do things where I combine the poetry with some of the visual work and the music and mix it all up. It's just one, it's just art, it's just life. Mm -hmm. Come see. Okay, those are pretty comprehensive answers. Any other questions? They might even be true. Yeah? They might even be true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Um, we'd like to thank you all for being here. And we'd like to thank the library, Black River Library, for hosting us. And once again, I want to say thanks to the National Library for having organized and supported this event. Um, partly in the presence of Mr. Stefan Morris, the marketing manager of the National Library. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. And just before we go, once more, a final round of applause for all three readers. members of the band. That was great. <laughs>